Hello there, folks, and thank for thank you for joining me once again at my tying bench. Uh, this time around, I decided to do a dry fly pattern pattern for you, and it's a White Miller dry fly. And there's a lot of patterns out there, White Miller pattern dry fly patterns, but this is just the way I tie my version. And I thought you might like to see how I do mine up, and uh, you might want to tie some up this way yourself as well. So we'll get this guy the vice here and uh, a fresh hook in. And I'll get started for you. And I'm going to tie them on, I usually tie these on like 10s and 12s, so I just chose a size 12 here. It's a TMC 100 standard dry fly hook. I'll get that locked down in the vise here. Okay. And for thread I'm using some Uni 8 dot white. And the first thing I'll do is start my thread. Load hook eye length behind there, leave a little space behind the eye. Then wrap the thread base back to about halfway on the shank and then I'm going to return towards the eye halfway once again and stop my thread there for my for my wing placement that's where I want the wings to go there and for the wings on this guy as you can see on this pattern it's teal flank so the way I prepare the teal flank is well, I'll try to find a feather when you, you get a bag of teal flank and you just I pick one feather and then I peel the uh, lower fibers down like so and I try to find one that's nice and straight across the top, like this one here. And then you just take your fingers and roll them together. And that gives you a nice bunch of flank like so for the wing. So, I'm going to uh, squeeze this one between my fingers here and get it ready to tie in for the wings. And it doesn't matter if it's a little darker or a little lighter shade. All this teal flank, that's all that's all that matters. Alrighty, so we're gonna just get this bunch together the way I want it for the wings and measure that up. Put hook shank length, move it forward, come down around with the pinch wrap, and I pull straight up, down once again, same deal, and then make two or three wraps back and just check the position, make sure your fibers are right on the top there like so looks good and I'll trim those on a slight angle there towards the bend and I'm gonna wrap towards the wing and then I'm gonna hold those up and build a nice little thread dam to prop them up first here before we split them just like so now there's different ways you can go about splitting your wings you can use a dubbing needle and, we're, and uh, divide them and a lot of times I'll just what I do is turn here and just take my fingers and just try to get a 50-50 bunch a 50% on each side of the for the wings there I'm sure it does the trunk don't mind if it's exactly perfect and that looks pretty good what I got right there so I'm gonna just need a few more on this side here so I'm just gonna adjust that a little bit that looks pretty good Okay, now the first thing I'll do is just make a simple crisscross wrap between them to uh, divide them first. Just snug that down nice and tight like so. And that just more or less gets them divided to start. And the way I do my wings is just simple figure eight wraps down the bottom. I'll just do two to three figure eights around the base of those wings. There's one, two, and I'll do a third. Come around. And then take your thread and just make one wrap directly behind the wings and then sort of prop them up a little with your fingers and then snug down nice and tight and that should set them in place for you. I find that's an easier method than a lot of methods you can do. There's other ways you can do it of course but for me I just find this the quickest and easiest way and you might like to try it this way. All right. And I'm just going to adjust them there a little, check them out. And as you can see, it gives you a nice wings there. They're divided good and even amounts on each side. But one thing I like to do before I continue is a little drop of head cement in between those wings. Just helps keep them in place. Just a little drip there if it ever comes out. Okay. Alrighty. It's funny, any other time the cement would come right out fast. Go 
Okay, folks, I'm having a little pincement issue here. But that's all right. There's more than one way to skin a cat, as they say. That doesn't want to come out. I shall just take a little bit of the good old UV solar red bone dry. We'll do the same trick here. Just get a little bit on the brush. A little drop between the wings like so. Just that we'll have to cure this is all. Once I get it set where I want it. Alright. Let's give that a little shot of light here. Just to set that in place. Okay. Only takes a few seconds for that stuff to cure. There we go. Alrighty, sorry about that little mix up there folks. I'll have to check that hit a minute. I must have a little clog in the tube there. Okay. Next, just we're gonna wrap back here towards the bend. Get just about to the barb and stop our thread. Now for the uh, tails, just some uh, creamish white uh, dry fly hackle barbels here. And this is just off of a cheaper Indian cape and it just does a fine job for tailing material I find. It doesn't have to be a really expensive cape. And we'll just pull off a decent amount here for the tail. And line those tips up even. Measure it up hook shank length. And we'll tie that in on top here. Wrap back a ways towards the barb. Alrighty, there's our tail. Then we'll go forward. And I'm going to snip those ends there to eat to meet where the uh, wings were tied down there. Try to get an even transition between the two materials before we tie in our rib next, just like so. Alrighty, for there's a rib on this guy, and it's just some really small, the small size uh, Mylar tinsel. It is size 16. Just want to get a piece of that. Uh, okay, just bear with me, folks. Okay, I got the right one here now. So we'll tie that in on the far side with the. Uh, silver side facing down so that comes up when we want to uh, wrap our rib there alrighty got that tied in go forward snug it in there nice and tight alright so now we're ready for our body material and it's simply some uh, just some plain cream colored uh, Grab a dubbing, just any creamish white color, or just white itself would also work. Put a little wax on the thread here. And I'll get a nice sparse noodle here. Not you don't want a thick noodle, just keep it sparse and a slight taper towards the front there. Okay. Less is more a lot of times when it comes to your dry flies for sure. Alright, so we're going to begin to wrap that. We'll go back first a few wraps. Get our first wrap right in front of our tail. Then we're going to proceed forward. Just like so here. Keep my rib and the material clip out of the way. Alrighty. As you can see, I have a slight taper there. Not a lot. And we had just the right amount of dubbing that time, folks. Okay, so now we'll just take that rib and we'll come down around. You get about three wraps usually on this guy. Actually, it doesn't matter if you have silver or gold showing. I don't think it matters a whole lot, so I wouldn't worry about it. And we'll get our third wrap there. Check that. And we'll come around. Tie this guy off couple wraps forward towards the wing then I like to fold my tinsels back to lock them in place so that way there's no way they're gonna pull out on you 
And our last step in the fly, of course, is our hackle. And for the hackle, I'm just using one hackle. It's a dry fly saddle cape, and it's a creamy, I guess you could call it a creamy white color there. I don't know if you can see it. It comes, shows more white on my camera, but it's got a creamy tinge to it. And I got one sized up here for number 12 hook. And we'll tie that in the usual way that we always do for our dry flies. A few hackle barbels peeled off to one side that you're going to wrap around first. And we'll tie him in here right in front of the body. And we're going to wrap that stem down as well here towards the wing right behind it. Snug against the wing then jump in front. Continue to wrap that stem down. Forward towards the eye. Okay, then I'll come in and snip the excess off right behind the eye there. And I'm just going to make a few wraps back and then forward once again to create a smooth thread base for the hackle wraps. And now we'll proceed to wrap. So, we'll come down around here. our first wrap and then just proceed forward like you normally would with one wrap following the next nice and close and we'll come in behind our wing nice and snug I'm gonna come right against the front of them wings jump in front nice and close as you can get to those wings and just keep proceeding forward here one thing about these saddle hackles you don't you can, but you don't need to use hackle pliers if they're nice and long. And I'm going to come up around and tie this guy off here. Right on top of the shank, just like so. Two or three wraps. Keep your thread tight as you do that. Nice tight tension on the thread. And a couple wraps in front of that stem. And then we'll reach in with the scissor points and you a little tri a tip, you can always use your thumb to uh, steady your scissors. It helps when you go in to uh, snip off hackle tips and whatnot. And i got a few fibers there I want to snip out as well. Now's the time to do it. And i got a couple right there sticking out. And that should be fine. Okay, now I'm going to make a few more turns here. Make sure everything's snug in there, nice and snug. Alright, so now what we got left is our whip finish on this guy and a little bit of Hitsman and he's a done deal. So we'll get that started here, our whip finish. Okie dokie. Alrighty, so I'll grab my whip finisher. Come in here and do a 4-5 or five turn whip finish. Just be careful not to trap down any fibers and I'll give her one more wrap here that's good okay snug it down nice and tight there snip off the excess thread and I got one fiber there that's bugging me that doesn't want to cooperate so he's coming out Alrighty, so there we have it folks, another size 12 White Miller Dry Fly. Okay, I want to grab my hit cement here, actually the hit cement is not cooperating as we seen earlier, so I'm just going to take a little bit of bone dry and put a tiny drop on those thread wraps. Very sparse amount. Fine. And give him a little zap of the UV light here. Cure that up. And there she be. So, once again, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial this time around. And like I usually say, if you have these materials for this fly, definitely give these a go and add a few to your box. So, until next time everyone, I want to wish you happy tying and also 
I don't want to forget to mention that if you haven't seen my videos before and you'd like to see more of these flies and others as well in the future, hit the good old subscribe button there. I appreciate that a lot. And throw in a like too. And any comments that you have, put them down below. I read each and every one. I appreciate those as well. So until next time, everyone, once again, happy tying. I'll see you all again soon. And so long for now, folks. Whoops, over there, folks. The camera's getting a little crazy on me. So long for now.